it's now time to start the engine since it has been removed for the crankshaft rear main seal and the transmission front pump torque converter seal so what I have here is the accelerator cable still removed and we want to make sure that our throttle is still moving and it's not stuck in position very important we want to make sure we have conventional oil inside of the engine you do not want to put synthetic oil the reason you don't want to use synthetic oil in this engine is because it has an EGR valve and the EGR valve is what contaminates synthetic oil to make it destroy your engine we're going to talk about that later on in this video for the moment we're going to fill the radiator and the engine cooling system with pipe water purify water that will be like drinking water because we're going to be flushing this system to clean out the inside of the engine water jacket in the video description link there will be a related video on how to flush the cooling system once you have the oil fill in the sump you want to make sure you install the oil filter you're going to fill the oil filter with oil and then attach it to its fitting another thing we cannot forget is to reconnect this hose for the front differential axle housing so here you're going to notice a trick that I've done since we have replaced this pitman arm seal I've simply took sock and wrap it around the shaft so in the event that rocks and sand and water will want to wash up into the seal this cloth will prevent it from doing so okay the next thing I want to do is I want to release that bolt for the distributor because we're going to need to adjust this distributor to bring the engine RPM back to 150 RPMs this is how we're going to set the time in temporary with the computer scanner since we don't have a timing light the timing can be set with the computer so since we remove the timing belt and reinstall it without moving the distributor it does not require us to reset the timing like the factory recommended but you should always do so by disconnecting the TPS sensor and we're gonna have a description for that in the video link on how to set the vehicle ignition time and once the timing belt has been installed let's go ahead and start the engine battery is connected install we want to keep the radiator cap off we want to make sure we fill this overflow to its recommended max level during the startup we must remember to air bleed the cooling system in the video description link there will be a video on how to air bleed the cooling system to prevent the engine from overheating so that's squeaking uh, from the alternator belt. I'm gonna have to check the tension for all the belt once the engine has come to temperature. Then we will adjust the distributor for 750 RPM. That's it. You do not have to go through the proceeding or the procedure like the manual recommend. Since the engine already had a perfect timing, once you reset that valve trim timing, this timing should never change. So the most you will have to do is probably move the distributor to set the RPM for 750 revolution per minute. Let's take a walk around under the vehicle and see what's going on. Alright, since we have the header manifold installed, the exhaust will have a little bit loudness. The oil leak at the crankshaft rear main seal has now been gone. Also the transmission leak has disappeared. This has completely successful 
seal replacement for the crankshaft rear main seal. It's now 162,894 miles. This is where we have replaced the crankshaft rear main seal and the automatic transmission front pump torque converter seal. This is bring us to the end of our video. Okay, now I'm trying to get to the gas station because I'm low on fuel. We're still at 162,894 miles, so hope we get there. Hundred and sixty two thousand nine hundred and four miles our test drive has completed now we want to check and see the codes the computer have retrieved from all the sensors that we have connected so here on our scan tool we can see we have eight codes and code number one is P0037 so this is a usual code with the modification that we have done since we have eliminated the primary catalytic converter. This is the ECU letting us know that there is no signal from that circuit or that circuit has a low signal. So as we move in, it will give us the freeze frame for when this code happened. Then we have other codes which is P0400 exhaust gas recirculation flow that's this tube right here has to get reconnected from the head of manifold to the EGR valve so here we have that's another catalytic converter oxygen sensor that's because the sensor is not connected then we have NOx sensor this is because of the distributor we have a cheap AutoZone distributor, it's probably $200. So to really get rid of this code, we have to buy the Nissan distributor, which is a Hitachi unit. I'm gonna talk about that another time in another video. So here we have P0400, that's the same EGR. So basically we have about four codes, three codes, eliminating this oxygen sensor. And those three codes can be fixed because we're going to replace this EGR tube and we are going to develop a simulator for this code so the sensor, the computer could see that the signal is there. Okay, now let's take a startup of the vehicle and listen for any noise.
it's now 163,044 miles as you can see and this is going to be a painful part for most of you that had to do a crankshaft rear main seal what I want to show you in this video is that the seal oil leak still exists you can see a drip of oil on the bottom of the bell housing there that goes straight to the floor since we replaced two seal in this transmission bell housing we will have to detect which one of those seal is leaking by looking at the oil so we can see this is engine oil and the way it feels it's like engine oil you can also smell it if this was transmission oil it will have a red color to it so this has a proof to us that the seal that we have replaced for the crankshaft rear main is faulty and not the transmission front pump torque converter seal when we look at that side right next to the starter that will be below the starter you can see oil dripping off of that bracket and also this is another famous area for developing that oil when it drops on this cross member so this is approximately 100 miles after replacing the crankshaft rear main seal so you're going to want to check the valve cover gasket because sometimes the back of the valve cover gasket will leak and that oil will run down to the transmission bell housing imitating a crankshaft rear main seal leak so this part of the video is where you're going to understand why it's important to purchase a dealer part and never a aftermarket part you see the seal that we install is some mom and pop shop that must have made it and that's the only available seal we had at the time because the one that we preferably would prefer to replace got misplaced always best to purchase the Nissan dealer or the factory the manufacturer seal for your application so again we must remove the engine and replace that brand new seal that was installed with a reputable seal from the manufacturer of the engine okay before I remove the engine to replace the crankshaft rear seal that we have installed I just want to add two container of this power steering with stop leak this power steering fluid has an additive in it that's going to help swell the seal to prevent the current oil leak that we're experiencing so right now we have approximately a little under a half a tank of gas we're going to consume this gasoline till the tank goes empty and if the leak does not go away then we have to remove the engine for replacing that aftermarket seal with a reputable manufacturer seal or a Nissan seal at the same time we're going to remove the tubular header and reinstall the factory cast iron converter so before I shut the engine off I just want to make sure I park the vehicle in a new location and we can already see the oil is dripping so we're gonna hope that this power steering with stop leak could prevent the oil leak from the crankshaft rear main seal.